In May 2010, you demonstrated that technology implanted in humans is no less vulnerable than the same technology not implanted in humans. In order to prove the principle of human-machine virus transmission, you infected an RFID chip, which was then implanted in your body. The virus, used to pass through security doors, was able to transmit this infected code to another chip outside your body. Can you talk about your experiment? When and how did you start to think about it? The problem with all of these technologies is um, they potentially introduce new risks and new vulnerabilities. So even in medical technologies, we know that um, a lot of the devices have no security um, access, no passwords for gaining access to the device. And that's largely because the devices are, are developed concentrating on their function rather than considering the surrounding issues. So if you know how to access a cardiac pacemaker, and they all operate wirelessly, because if the doctor needs to change some sort of um, parameter in the device, they don't want to take it back out. So wireless communication, if you know how, you're straight in, you can take out data, you can turn the device off, you can change the way that it works. Um, this is obviously a, a, an obvious security risk. The simple device that I have, the RFID device, we've shown how we can actually infect it with a computer virus and when I try and access the building to gain access, um, the virus actually is transferred to the building and then propagates through its database, corrupts the database and then it can be transferred to anyone else trying to use the system. Well, we've got a, an interest in um, all types of implantable technologies and what um, a lot of the discussion hasn't really considered is the risks associated with them. Um, so for some time we've been interested in security and privacy associated with a wide range of technologies um, and we started to focus on these implantable devices um, originally, our focus, like most people, was from the function and how it works and how we can interact with the brain. But then we began to look at, well, what actually happens when we start using these technologies? What risks do we open ourselves up to? Um, and is there a sensible discussion that needs to happen before these technologies become widely deployed? Um, and the answer is yes, there is there's plenty of discussion that we need to have. Um, security and privacy associated with um, devices is extremely important. Um, and it's, it's surprising that medical devices don't tend to consider it at all uh, in most cases. Um, the RFID um, implant that I've had um, goes back to uh, 1998 when we did a, an experiment with Professor Warwick um, and he had an RFID um, pet tag type device implanted um, at that stage. Um, and it was very simple what it could do, it just broadcast a number uh, to identify itself. And we used that for a range of experiments uh, in the cybernetics building. Um, what we wanted to do is show how the technology is changing. We know that there's a small community of people which are implanting these types of devices. Uh, and we wanted to show how new applications um, emerge as the technology develops and how similar risks to the medical devices start to emerge, so security and privacy type um, issues. So the experiments that um, I designed were linked to the work that we did in 1998. It was really taking the experiments we did then and then redoing them with the technology as it stands now and exploring the new issues surrounding it and then trying to extrapolate from that and say, well, okay, if we look in another 10 years, another 20 years, what will the issues potentially be then? Um, certainly as we come to redeploy medical technologies for enhancement, if we find ways to do that. Um, now's the time to have sensible discussion. Um, so really we wanted to do these experiments to show that there are issues, show the discussion is, is valid and necessary, and try and open up a, a wider dialogue. Um, there was some work um, a few years back from a research group in the Netherlands who were looking at specific RFID type technologies and um, how um, risks like computer viruses um, could become issues as the technology developed and became more capable. Um, the type of implantable RFID devices had pretty much stayed very, um, very static over the last um, 10 years or so. 
um, and it's only now that really commercially available um, RFID tags which are capable enough to suffer from the risks like computer viruses have started to emerge. Um, so I think the idea for having an implant which I could infect with a computer virus um, came from uh, a knowledge that the, the research community was starting to show that there were these issues associated with it but also the idea that um, having a piece of technology implanted in your body meant more than just um, the discrete entities of a person and the technology something there's something more when the technology is linked intimately to the body or implanted in the body so there are psychological changes associated with it um, there have been many reports from um, um, people who've used prosthetics that um, there's almost an extension to their proprioception how they um, perceive their their body their mental image of their body to include um, the uh, the prosthetic device um, but more than that they sort of incorporate the, the concept of having technology in the body um, into their, their concept of their bodily boundaries. Um, even going back to 98, um, when Professor Warwick had his implanted device, he was saying that actually there's a, a psychological link that you develop with the technology. It, it, it becomes more than just a piece of technology that you use like your phone or your watch. Um, and I was very interested to explore this phenomenon firsthand because it's very difficult to explain exactly what these psychological changes are, how you actually feel about the technology. Um, it's a little like having your house burgled and trying to explain to someone um, that sort of pit of the stomach feeling that you feel that you know, your house has been violated, your privacy has been violated. If someone hasn't had something stolen from them or their house burgled, they might wonder why you're so concerned about just losing some things. But there's more to it than that. There's a psychological aspect. And we're reaching a stage where um, we can't separate the human and the technology. These are applications where we have to consider them as one. And that has really important implications. So this is really at the root of why I wanted to do this study.